Democracy That Delivers is brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. Now to your host, Ken Jakes. Hi, everyone. This is Ken Jakes. I'm the host of Democracy That Delivers, our podcast here at SITE. And today we're going to do something a little bit different we haven't done in a while on the program. We're going to start, and this is the first one of our Emerging Leaders mini-series that we're going to do on the program for the first quarter of uh, 2022. And uh, I'm with four of junior staff with SITE. And two are my absolute favorites because they work with me in the communications department, uh, Zoe Watkins and Autumn Moore. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. They're going to co-host this with me today, by the way. But I've got to know them very well. I've known Autumn now for, I guess, close to uh, two and a half, three years, three years, something like that. And she's wonderful. Zoe equally is wonderful. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to them because this is about them. What we're going to talk about today is really getting to know why all four of these members and two we're going to introduce in just a second came to site, what their influences were growing up, really get to understand the human side of the people that we work with. And because that's the leadership of SITE in the next several years. And even if they decide to to move away from SITE, I know they're going to have really good experience and learning experience at SITE that will take them wherever they go in their careers. So Zoe and Autumn, I'm going to turn it over to you real quick and have you introduce yourselves to the audience. Zoe, I'm going to start with you. Wow. Well, thank you for that introduction, Ken. You're making me blush. (laughs) My name is Zoe. I am the communications coordinator. So I work very closely with Ken and Autumn, and I'm excited to get to know our two other guests coming soon, because I have only been at SIPE for just under a year, and I'm excited to be on the podcast for the first time after producing it for almost a year now. So now I get to see the other side of the coin. <laughs> yeah, you and Autumn have produced this program going back. Well, Autumn, uh, you and uh, Lucia, who used to work here, produced it before. And then you stepped in once Lucia left. And now Zoe's kind of taken the, the brunt of the producing responsibilities. But uh, before I get to Autumn real quick, Zoe, tell us a little bit about yourself. You have a, a very unique background. You are American, French. You grew up in France. You're bilingual, uh, and I think you speak a little bit of Spanish too, I think, but you're a real asset to us. Uh, you went to a phenomenal school here in the United States. So tell us a little bit about your background, and, and you, you've told me in the past, and, and I love talking to you about this, because I really like the diversity that we have here at SIPE, and you really fit in that very, very well. I do have a, a complicated background, <laughs> citizen of the world. Um, I was born and raised in France by American parents. So I am a dual national. I came to the States uh, for college, apparently with a heavy accent, but I've worked really hard to get rid of it. So you guys let me know how that's doing. (laughs) And yeah, I, I do speak a little bit of German, mostly, thanks to my grandparents who are Austrian. And then the Spanish really just comes from my partner, who's been trying hard to teach me for the last four years, but... Mostly, I just revert to French with A's and O's at the end. (laughs) Autumn, I'm going to get to you real quick. I know you very well. You're like a family member. And and we kind of treat the communications team kind of as a a family. We're all very tight-knit, close. We're all very good friends with each other. And we have a very good working relationship. The chemistry with our whole team is very, very good. And I think right now, we probably have the best team we've ever had at SITE. But uh, you are a graphics genius, and I'm going to say that because I think you are. I think I think you do wonderful work. You're also very good in video production, and we, we just finished uh, three videos uh, that we did for the Demo- uh, Summit for Democracy, which, uh, which I thought turned out incredibly well. But tell us a little bit about yourself. A little bit of different background. You're, you're from upstate New York, went to Syracuse University, studied communications. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ken. So I'm the digital content creator at Sype. I originally started my studies thinking that I was going into advertising. And then with through my women's and gender studies minor, I kind of realized that I could take my communication skill set and apply it to a nonprofit organization. And that aligned much more closely with my morals and my aspirations for what I wanted to get out of my career. And for my master's degree, I did international relations and public relations, which brought me to SIPE because I actually ended up doing an internship here. And now I've been at SIPE for three years and I'm really excited to finally be on the podcast. Yeah. And I want to jump in here. You mentioned internship. We've had a very good track record with hiring interns to be full-time employees and also temps. Zoe was a temp and uh, and also another colleague of ours, Christian, was a temp. 
and before you guys Bridget, which you know was was a temp as well. Uh, but I mentioned another woman a while ago, Lucia. She was an intern, and uh, so we've had really good experience with both temps and interns. Autumn, tell us a little bit about your internship experience and why you decided to stay at Site. Yeah, I think Site has a extremely strong internship program. I felt that I was valued as an equal team member, not just given like administrative tasks. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, when when you were an intern, you were you were like a, a full time employee with us. Yep, I was pretty much here thirty to forty hours a week as an intern. You know, joined you guys for lunches, helped create flyers, did social media content, helped with events, and so it was pretty much an easy uh, yes when I was offered a position at site. Yeah, it, it was a no-brainer for us to hire you. So, I mean, you fit in really well, and you're, you're one of the most valued employees at, at site, and uh, we're really glad to uh, to have you. Let's jump over to our guest today, and this is kind of the uh, the meat and potatoes of, of what we're doing with this mini-series. We want to learn about new members and young members at site and uh, their backgrounds and, and uh, what they want to accomplish, and we're going to start with uh, Adam Goldstein. He is an associate program officer uh, with us at SIPE. Adam, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. How are you? So tell us a little bit about yourself. We didn't get a chance to talk too much before the program. So where are you from? Uh, where'd you go to school? What were some of your influences growing up and, and why you decided to go into development work? Sure. So I grew up in Philadelphia and I was always really interested in like social studies and like history growing up and it's so always really interested in social movements, like looking at all the energy between people who are kind of contesting for better conditions, advocating for themselves. I always found that stuff really interesting. So when I was applying to colleges, I wanted to be in D.C. And I ended up at American University, uh, where I did my undergrad in comparative politics. Then I stuck around for my master's degree in comparative politics as well, with a focus on social movements. Now, did you take a, a break between your undergrad and graduate degree, or did you go straight through? No, I went straight through. I did an, a, an accelerated five-year uh, master's program. Okay. And um, in high school, uh, I was in high school when the Arab Spring happened, and that was really when I was interested in development work and like comparative politics and democratization, social movements, all of that stuff. Um, so I really wanted to focus on the Arab Spring in college and graduate school. So I did a lot of research in class and outside of class. I wrote some papers uh, that ended up publishing in different like undergraduate publications and graduate publications. So I was always like really interested in that sort of work. And uh, did you get a chance uh, to travel any overseas uh, during your studies? Not to the Middle East, but I did study abroad in England at uh, King's College for a semester. And I saw plenty of Europe then. <laughs> well, that's, that's terrific. How did you like France? Well, I was in Paris for a weekend, which was incredible. I, I probably ate enough to last me a week when I was there. Oh, for sure. More than a week. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's yes. my favorite city in the world. I love that place. Yeah. A lot of yeah. fun. Adam, do you speak any languages? No. Well, I speak English. And uh, <laughs> and, then, um, and I grew up, uh, I was taking Latin classes in middle school and high school. Um, right. So it was great for the SATs, but not so helpful for development work. So growing up in Philadelphia, uh, you you a sports fan of Philadelphia teams? I'm a big Sixers fan, unfortunately, yeah. right now. Unfortunately, um, right now, yeah. And uh, growing up, I was always a huge soccer fan, and I've been like a diehard Chelsea fan since maybe 2002 or 2003. Now, does that have anything uh, to do with your travels to England? Uh, I might have had some influence. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. What about growing up? What was what were some of your influences, uh, parents, aunts and uncles, uh, that, that kind of uh, gave you a moral compass and, and uh, kind of led you along the way? Sure. Well, um, my dad is a psychologist, and he was always asking like critical questions of like why I was doing things and like what was happening. And it made me always want to think about like digging under the surface to try and understand like different like social phenomena, like different things happening in politics and comparative politics. So that, that was a really big influence for me. Well, and I think that's very important, especially the way that we teach at the university level here in the United States. You learn how to learn. And that it, my brother is a professor at Indiana University. We talk about this a lot. So you got that growing up from your father is really kind of learning how to question things, learning how to learn as you go along. And that's the whole point of a university degree, in, in my opinion. And unfortunately, I think we're kind of sliding away from that a little bit in university education here in the United States, but but that's what a good liberal arts education really does, is teaches you how to learn. It's a lifetime thing. Uh, so you got that growing up. Yeah, it was always more interesting to me to understand why rather than what. It, exactly, exactly. That sounds pretty interesting. Mikra, uh, Mikra Kaznici, he is a resource officer for PPL. 
We're really glad to have you on the program today. Mikra, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. So same questions. So, and we talked a little bit before the program. You're from Europe and we were talking about Eastern versus Western and and all that stuff and the nuances. But tell us a little bit about yourself growing up. Uh, where did you go to university and how did you end up at site? Yeah, sure. I uh, I grew up in um, in Kosovo, the Balkans, or Western Balkans or Southeast Europe, and uh, however you want to call it these days. Um so I came for um, I came for college in the U.S. about uh, 19 years ago now. I did uh, my undergrad at a small college in Iowa, and then uh, oh, which one? I doubt you would uh, heard of it. It's called Wartburg College. It's in yeah, North I know. I, I'm from the Midwest, so <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, after that we moved to D.C. and uh, I did my first master's degree at uh, George Mason. That's where I met actually uh, John Sullivan. The, okay. Uh, so uh, CEO of site and then I did my second master's at Harvard on uh, economic uh, policy and government at Kennedy School and I did my third master's degree I know and you, you sound like autumn autumn has two master's degrees <laughs> so uh, so now I have three so apparently I'm collecting uh, degrees now so well, I feel very very uneducated I only have one <laughs> So my, my third though is is um is in writing. Oh, terrific! From uh, Columbia University. So uh, that's about the extent of my education. And how did I end up at Site? I actually did a uh, short stint with Site back in two thousand eight with Kim uh, Kim Betcher, our, our, poly, our director. I was a consultant there briefly before I went to do my master's in Boston. And so I always sort of like um, I liked uh, when I worked there. And so I always kept an eye. Side, but I did some work with World Bank and UN, and I also worked for the uh, Office of Research for the Governor of Maryland for about seven years in Baltimore. And then, um, and then I decided to sort of like um, uh, I saw an opportunity at Site, and I thought, you know, I'd return uh, to the place I wanted to. And when did when, when did you start at Site? Of course, uh, it, it's after COVID started. Yes, I did. I'm one of those people who started um, what remotely. So coming up uh, a year in March, early March, I think seven, March 7th okay. is when I started. So yeah, about okay. 10. Mika, I didn't realize we started right around the same time. I'm also a COVID hire. I remember you came after me. Maybe it was uh, just a couple of weeks after or something like that. So we're both new, yeah. And M Mika, what, what languages do you speak? So I grew up, my native is Albanian, but I grew up speaking also Serbian. Serbian and, as well. Um, English came to my generation, you know. At, right, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of German speakers in that part of the world as well. So I, I lived in Belgrade for two and a half years. There's a huge diaspora uh, from the region uh, in Germany. So yeah, I was planning on using my German there because pre site pre COVID, I was supposed to go into the Peace Corps and be stationed in Albania, actually. So I'm really excited to get a little hint of what I missed out on, sadly. <laughs> Zoe, this is your first job, a uh, professional job, correct? That's right. Yeah. I mean, I was a federal work study student through college, but. And Autumn, I can't remember if you did some work before or this is your real first job. No, like Adam, I went straight to my master's. Um, yeah. I did an internship in Belgium and then an internship at Site, And now I'm here. So this is my first professional job as well. Yeah. And I, Adam, is this your first professional job? Uh, no, it's my second. Second one. Um, okay. Where'd you work before? Uh, right after grad school, uh, I accepted a position with a small research grant at American University. Oh, at AU, um, okay. Yeah, it was called uh, Tadaman, um, which is Arabic for solidarity. Okay. And, and investigated like urban issues of urban planning and like local governance throughout MENA. Okay. Well, let me go around the room real quick and and uh, ask you guys what you do at SIPE. And uh, Zoe, I know you very well and Autumn as well, but what, what, why don't you tell everybody what you do within the communications part? Zoe, I'll start with you. Sure. So you are actually, all of our listeners are probably familiar with uh, some of my work because I do a lot of the social media for at Site Global, follow us, <laughs> as well as uh, helping Autumn out with some of her responsibilities on audiovisual production, like the podcast, events, um, design work. Communications department has a really broad responsibilities, so we kind of have our fingers in everything. <laughs> Yeah, and then you uh, put together a new uh, ticketing system for us that we're in <laughs> right. doing, which, which uh, it might sound boring to everybody out there, but <laughs> it is absolutely essential. We have over 200 employees at site, and we get literally 
I don't know, anywhere from 50 to 100 email requests every single day. And it's really hard to manage. And, and she has gone through and created a ticketing system to kind of manage that, which she's done a phenomenal. I know it sounds boring, but it, but uh, I, <laughs> I, I am love a tasker. it. You I don't find this boring at all. I have all the organizing apps. I was actually <laughs> just talking to my partner because he he said I'm doing the same thing to you guys as I did to him because I I have <laughs> a, an application at home for like all the chores that need to be done and due dates and by who and how often. So I bet you're fun on vacation. <laughs> Oh, you have no idea. Vacations are more exhausting than work days are sometimes. Autumn, what about you? What do you do? So Zoe covered some of it, but some of my favorite parts of my work at Skype are definitely events and video work, which is actually something that was out of my scope prior to being at Skype. And thank you, Ken, for uh, teaching me some video editing skills and how to storyboard. That has been a lot of fun. Social media, I did start in the beginning helping uh, produce the podcast episodes and I'm glad to pass that torch to Zoe. But yeah, I think uh, I'd like to pass Adam and Mikra the mic and kind of ask them, you know, what are your favorite and most rewarding parts of your jobs? Or do you have a program or project that you hold near and dear? Sure. So I think my favorite part of my job is that I have a lot of latitude to like do research projects and kind of like conduct some analyses of a lot of different areas of Sipe's work. So like when I first started, I was really interested in informality. So I got to write an article series looking at informality during COVID and like informality under some different lenses like spatial inequality. So yeah, it was just really, really interesting to me to get those types of opportunities. Adam, so, so what do you do exactly at Sipe? Sure, um, so I am the Associate Program Officer for Applied Research. Site, so I help manage like their research pipeline. I worked with like some outside researchers, and I work with uh, Mikra now to kind of like ma- manage the research pipeline. Prior to that, I was doing combination of the applied research work and also some outreach work. Okay. Do you use statistics? Did you have any statistical training when you were at AU? Yeah, I do have uh, some methods training on stats. Uh, I know st- uh, Stata. I know a little bit of R. We don't do too much stats with people. No, we don't here. Yeah, my master's no. degree is in public policy, and uh, 15, okay. 15 hours was uh, applied uh, uh, statistics and, and also 15 hours of econometrics. So, and, and I quite frankly love that. Uh, it's, it, I, when I had my PR firm for many years, I would write and, and uh, create my own polls and surveys, which is very, it, it, it's not very um, sophisticated statistics for those that follow statistics when you're doing simple uh, uh, surveys. But it was a lot of fun, and, and I learned a lot when I was doing that. So another b- boring thing, and I'm sure we're boring the, the viewers out there, we're talking about statistics now. Statistics were my worst grade in college, so oh, I'm I glad loved it. that I, ab- <laughs> I got absolutely the loved communication it. side of things. Autumn knows this because she's heard me <laughs> talk about it a lot in the last three years. Mikra, what do you do? So as a research officer, I manage the um, sort of this applied research um, part of our uh, department. So I don't know how familiar you are with uh, PPL, which is like it has these three pillars. One is applied research. One is about our FEDN um, membership conference, uh, whatever you want to call it, I guess. The other one is um, on knowledge management. And so yeah. I work uh, specifically on the applied research and mostly I uh Sometimes I work with researchers around the world, contracting research. Uh, we produce some in-house um, research as well, but I mostly, right now, uh, managing two projects. Uh, one, what we call hubs, is in these transition countries in Ukraine, Tunisia, and Bolivia. And the other one is that I'm managing some research that we've contracted uh, with researchers from around the world on, on themes of government business relationship. And that part of SIPE has really grown. Kim Betcher, who runs that department there, it was him and another person when I started. I started at SIPE about eight years ago, and it's really grown since then. Yeah. And the scope has really grown. He used to be on that show, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you said you worked with him a little bit in 2008. Yeah, when it was uh, only knowledge management, really. Knowledge management, that's what it was then, yeah. yeah. It, it, so it, it was just one person, him, and I was just helping him a little bit. And But now it's, yeah, it's grown into yeah. the... Mikra, you you uh, you mentioned Fedden. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about Fedden. Probably Adam would be, uh, know more about uh, Fedden than I do. So why don't I um, defer to Adam? To sure. Help. So Fedden's a network of people who have all worked with SIPE in the past and continue to work with SIPE through their organizations or independently. They're all like experts in their field. And they're from all over the world. 
Yeah, up to I think up to 37 countries now. Yeah. Um, and the network expands every year. We always admit new members. The focus areas reflect types focus areas. So we kind of view them as a really important knowledge resource for the organization to rely on. We're increasingly raising their profile at Slipe, so through different events and newsletters and activities. So Autumn, go ahead. So uh, Adam and Mikra, can you uh, tell us some of your like short and long-term goals at Sipe and what you, drew you to your position? Uh, sure. Um, so I think short-term goals. I'd like to get more experience uh, managing like research pipelines with contractors. So I'm glad to be working with Mikra now on, on that. Um, long-term goals, I'd like to be able to kind of like design my own like research agendas to get more involved with like the project design process. Yeah, and I think uh, what drew me to Sipe was that uh, Sipe's approach to development and democracy work is kind of like an all-of-society approach. So it focuses on not just politics, but also markets and businesses, and increasingly uh, takes a more inclusive look at that, that type of interaction. So it's just something that's been really exciting for me. Yeah, so um, my uh, my goal here is to really just help the department grow and increase our capacity for in-house research as well as sort of like um, increase our capabilities for assessing research that we, we bring from outside and we contract. So it's just to... Um, offer high quality, um, pragmatic uh, and applied research to both our uh, Cypress and also our partners out there. So uh, I know it's it's ambitious, but um, I think uh, we're making progress with Adam and, and Kim. So far, so good. Yeah, well, as a, um, given your introductions, the most um, junior person on the podcast here, I'm really interested in, in your career paths and, and the lessons you've learned along the way. So have you guys faced any challenges, whether before or at Sipe, that you have learned from in a way that, you know, you wish you had known back when you were my age <laughs> and that you would like to share with any other young professionals that are listening now? Well, I guess I'll start. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I made uh, plenty of mistakes along the way and maybe too many to count. Um, but obviously, as I say, it's, it's probably true that uh, you learn from mistakes. And um, I, if I had any advice for anyone just starting out or maybe just, I don't know, first or second job would be just to actually try to make mistakes, not try to avoid them. Avoiding them, it's just, first of all, not uh, feasible. Second of all, it's it's not good for learning process and growing in the job or uh, outside the job. So that's, that's as far as I can um, really tell. I'm not good with giving people advice. No, I think that's great advice, honestly, it both in professional life and personal life. Like you said, I think it applies across all levels. I, I had to learn that the hard way, actually. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I didn't do so well at one of those semesters at that great school that Ken was talking about and, uh, and had to take a semester off. And it was really hard facing that first hurdle. Right. But then I always joke that, you know, I had to reapply and get into Cornell, not once, but twice. <laughs> so, you know, I, I learned and came out stronger on the other side. Yeah, for, for as long as there are these mistakes are not debilitating in a way that, you know, they paralyze people to take risks and uh, they all should be considered as lessons, I guess, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the other piece of, you know, advice I give to myself and uh, is try to be authentic yourself as much as possible, you know. Yeah, everybody else has already taken, right? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> Adam, how about you? Everybody comes to this with the, their own perceptions, right? And their own mistakes. Yeah, I think it's um one thing that I'm learning and continuing to learn is knowing when to ask questions and like when to just go ahead and try stuff. You know, there's times when it's, if you don't have like an idea about what you want to be doing, it's really good to ask questions. And other times it's good if you just like take a first stab at it and say, hey, am I on the right track? So learning how to navigate like doing something when like maybe the end deliverable is unclear has been a challenge for me and probably will always be one, but it's good to, you know, just keep asking questions along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard sometimes because it requires putting your ego aside. I don't know everything, regardless what school I graduated from or the experience that I have, we're always learning from each other. And I count myself lucky to be at Sipe in an environment where that's so encouraged, especially on the communications team. Ken already said, we're like a family, right? So there are no wrong questions. And in fact, asking those questions is what leads to great innovation, right? That's what we're here for. That's what the young professionals are here for. <laughs> it's all about learning. And, uh, you know, we, and, and to your point, Mikra, mistakes will be made. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously we try to avoid the stakes, but not to the detriment of, you know, the good of the whole, uh, you, you really, you know, have to take risk. And that's something that I talk about a lot within my department is taking risk. And when you have higher risks, you're going to be more prone to mistakes and that's going to happen, but that's how you learn. And that's how you get better. And that's something that, that we really encourage a lot within our department, especially, and we have to in communications because that's just the, the nature of the communications business. So we, we got a couple more minutes left. Ken, I just want to steal your thunder and ask the question you always ask at the end sure. of the podcast. I was going to ask it. Go ahead. <laughs> It's all yours. <laughs> so Adam and Mikra, if you had a crystal ball that you could see into the future, what would you see in the next five years <laughs> as far as for your team and for your own individual role? Where do you aspire to be? Ooh, Adam, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I think for myself, I'd like to have like an accomplished uh, project that like I've kind of created and designed on my own under my belt, like kind of manage the research pipeline from start to finish. Yeah, I, th I think just kind of like having some like tangible accomplishments, like for PPL specific programming that like I've kind of solely managed would be would be a great thing. I guess for me, it's just to really grow the uh, the unit into a place uh, solid and high quality research so that people come to for ideas and for lessons and and not only SI, but to become a center for um, others outside SI to sort of like uh, look us up and use our research and our ideas and um, use it for whatever work they do out there. So that's, I think it's simple, but it's a, it's a huge project. We'll have to have you guys back on the podcast in five years and <laughs> check in on those goals. Exactly. Exactly. So listen, we're out of time. Uh, it went by extremely fast, like I told you it would. Uh, I'm very, very uh, fortunate to have all four of you on. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, and and, uh, and this is a really good idea for for a mini series because uh, it's a little different perspective than we normally have on the program. But it's been very useful, and I'm sure our listeners have really enjoyed it. So, Autumn, Zoe, Adam, and Mikra, thanks so much. I really appreciate it, and we'll see everybody next time. Take care. Democracy that delivers has been brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. For more information, please visit sipe.org.